Let's see what we have here. How about practicing some crazy moves? This time I'll do an amazing trick with a glass. Maybe I'll just push it. Ah, oh, no, that's too repetitive. I'll do an awesome flip. Ha! Come to me, baby. And I'll land heroically. Isn't it beautiful? Look at me. I'm so cool. Right? Aya, this is Druid Cat. Welcome to my course. Today we're diving into AI-generated video using WAN, an open-source model that excels at image-to-video animation. I'll walk you through a complete workflow using an anime-style project as an example. We'll cover how to create high-quality AI videos efficiently and cost-effectively. If you've been overpaying for AI-generated videos on mainstream platforms, get ready to change your workflow forever. This course requires access to my Patreon-exclusive materials, so if you want to get the full experience and support my work, head over there for exclusive templates and resources. Fun fact, why did the Chinese developers name this model One? Because it always has the high ground. Obi-Wan would be proud. Step 1. In today's topic, we'll focus on creating a Ghibli-style short anime. Go to runpod.io and create an account if you haven't already. First things first, deposit $10 into your account. Be careful, though. If you forget to shut down your pod, your funds will disappear into the void. Click on Deploy Pods, then choose Community Cloud. To maximize speed, Click the Wi-Fi icon and change the speed setting to Extreme. Choose the RTX 6000 ADA GPU for the best results. If you're only working with 480p key resolution, an RTX 4090 will do. But anything above that requires the 6000 ADA. Load my one template available on Patreon and wait about 20 minutes for everything to set up. This may sound frustrating, but it's a necessary evil. The AI models used for video generation are over 100 gigabytes in size and there's no way around this wait time. Plan ahead and deploy your pod at least 20 minutes before you start working. Now, let's talk about why this setup is so much better than mainstream AI video platforms. If you're using paper generation services, you're getting scammed. Platforms charge 40 cents per video and the default one settings they use prioritize speed over quality. Here, you get full control over resolution, quality, and optimization, all while paying only for the time your pod is running. Let's do the math. On RunPod, an hour of processing costs 74 cents, and within that time, you can generate 20 videos. If you were using a paid service, those same 20 generations would cost you $8, and half of them would probably be useless anyway. Compare 74 cents versus $8, and tell me which one makes sense. RunPod is one of the cheapest cloud services on the market, and this is unfortunately not an advertisement because I work non-stop with AI, and cost optimization has led me to promote these types of solutions, which are not the simplest, but cheap, and professional. Getting back to the topic, if your pod launches but ports 3040 Comfy UI and 8888 Jupyter Notebook aren't working, bad gateway error, click on Logs. You will probably see that the models are still downloading. You just need a little patience. Step 2. Our goal is to use image to video to tell a story. First, write a short script. ChatGPT can help generate both the script and detailed image prompts for your keyframes. For the anime project I'm showcasing, I used the Ghibli Flux model from Civit AI and my previous Comfy UI template for consistent characters, Laura training, and image manipulation. These techniques allow full control 
over the visual style of your project. If you're interested in image generation workflows, check out my earlier courses. Once we have our initial images, upload them to the 1480p Image to Video Workflow. This workflow is fast because 480p resolution is lightweight and anime style visuals don't require excessive detail. I've included a detailed resolution guide in the workflow explaining how to calculate frame count based on video length. For animations, 14 to 16 frames per second is the sweet spot. Even for realistic footage, generating fewer frames and interpolating them later is much faster and more efficient. Free tools like FlowFrames or software like Topaz Video AI can handle interpolation. The workflow includes an image resize node which automatically scales images to match the correct resolution. However, make sure to manually set the correct resolution in the one image to video node, according to my guide. Incorrect settings will lead to poor results. The length parameter controls the number of frames. The green node, positive prompt, is where you enter your prompt. The red node, negative prompt, is pre-configured for general use but can be customized. For optimization, the key node is one video T cache. Increasing the REL one thresh value speeds up rendering. However, there's a trade-off. Higher values mean lower motion quality. You can use this to quickly preview animation direction before fine-tuning your prompts. In my template, you have full control over T cache optimization unlike on paid scam platforms where they crank it to the max to generate videos quickly, leaving you with blurry, low-quality motion. If you want full control, right-click the T-Cache node and select Bypass to disable it entirely. The choice is yours. Step 3. I've also included the one image to video caption upscale and frame interpolation workflow. This all-in-one setup makes video generation even easier. This workflow has built-in flow frames, allowing you to automatically interpolate 16 FPS animations up to 30 FPS. Again, I included T-Cache optimization. We can even notice for the experiment that the movement of the cat's eyes, if the parameter is quite high for this T-Cache, will be blurry, not very correct. And when we turn it off, the quality of our generation becomes much better, but we waited a bit longer. The cat's eyes are already surprisingly correct. It looks natural. Generally, what this workflow is about is that we can use Florence for auto-captioning our image. That means it will describe what's in the image from the top, and based on this prompt, we can set it in motion. We can use this when we simply want to introduce some movement to our image without particular interference. It can also be useful to describe what's in the image and copy this description to our prompt, because this way, if we have a well-described image, the generated video will also be of better quality. Using the Switch to Own Prompts node, we choose whether we want to use an automatic description or our own prompt. Similar to the previous workflow, we set width and height, which is our resolution. Video length, which is the number of frames. Frame interpolation and upscale image can also be turned on or off as needed. And that's basically it. We click the play icon and we can generate. The 720p workflow is exactly the same workflow as the first one. Only I've set higher resolutions by default. We also simply have one text to video. Here, everything works the same way as in the first workflow. Only here, we don't have the first image that we upload, but we generate the film directly from text. And so we can, for example, generate some chat GPT prompts, cue them appropriately, for example, two videos per prompt, go for coffee, come back, and in a moment, we will have 10 videos. Step four. For storytelling, consider adding a voiceover. Use text-to-speech tools like Eleven Labs and add background music to enhance the atmosphere. With the right approach, your AI-generated video could go viral on TikTok and beyond. Step 5. 
To download your videos, use the book icon on the left sidebar. This opens a file browser, allowing you to save videos directly. You can also access them in Jupyter Notebook, port 8888, under the Outputs folder. I cover this process in almost every video, so check my previous tutorials for more details. Step 6. At the end of your session, shut down your RunPod instance. If you plan to continue later, simply stop the pod. Otherwise, fully shut it down to avoid unnecessary charges. If you really need to keep your data on RunPod, you can use the storage function. Simply add a new network volume, select the region where the GPUs you plan to use are located, name the volume, and specify the storage size. Finally, you'll see the monthly cost for storing your data, and you can deploy this volume to your selected GPU and template. Support me on Patreon to access my RunPod Comfy UI templates. Thanks to your support, I've already gathered a quite engaged community. Naturally, I'll soon announce a live stream for all supporters, where I'll conduct a group course and, also, answer your questions in real time. I'm looking forward to this interactive experience with you all. As a bonus, I've also prepared Sky Reels and Hanyuan template. Before one, they were the go-to models, but one is so much better that I don't see a reason to cover them further with video tutorial unless future updates make them competitive again. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Hey!